Hello guys and welcome back to yet another AMC video. Today, I want to talk about how the shorts will lose trillions of dollars as time goes by until they ultimately succumb to the mother of all short squeezes. I want to elucidate and run through the numbers on how this user has been offered $1 trillion to lend out his AMC shares for the long term. So remain tuned and let's start making money immediately. Arrive quickly with the essential information. Therefore, this user posted that trading 212 told him he could become a trillionaire by lending out his AMC shares. Clearly, trading 212 is making a number of assertions here, as it lends out shares on a long-term basis. However, a projection of this user's interest earnings over 11 years indicates that he or she could earn over $1 trillion. This is not a video attempting to persuade you to lend out your shares. I'll simply describe how the shorts will pay trillions of dollars until they ultimately go insolvent. Now, trading 202 assumes that this user lends $15,000 worth of shares over a period of 11 years and continues to reinvest his earnings, evidently at a sky-high AMC borrowing cost. Now, you may say, Tom, I don't have 11 years to wait for the pinch, and I believe many individuals would concur. Don't forget, however, that it's not just one person lending out $15,000 worth of shares. There are numerous funds, institutions, and banks that lend out shares worth millions, tens of millions, and hundreds of millions of dollars. These funds continue to lend out their shares and will likely do so for the foreseeable future, costing these shorts billions, if not trillions of dollars. Now, we have added the caveat that this is based on the assumption that the APR or cost to borrow remains constant and that I reinvest my shares. But goddamn, they want me to lend my shares so desperately. Now, as if to add insult to injury, he stated that it is only straightforward compound interest. However, I appreciate you sharing this because it illustrates how this must proceed. Options A and B, he stated that the shorts pay trillions of dollars in interest to hedge funds, market makers, banks, and the few individuals who lend out shares until they fail. There is a limit to the number of counterfeits the government and hedge funds can print and continue to pay interest and fees on until everyone begins to drop like flies. Option B is that this scenario concludes with the mother of all short squeezes, a market correction that causes AMC shares to behave normally after the squeeze. Therefore, I wish to analyze the figures to demonstrate that this is very probable. Even with a relatively modest shareholding of $15,000, it is possible to profit. You may respond, Tom, I don't have $15,000 worth of shares, which is an entirely reasonable response. Clearly, there are individuals with $15,000 worth of shares, as well as hedge funds, institutions, and banks with hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars worth of shares that are lending out these shares. Therefore, assuming a consistent cost to borrow charge of 200%, which is currently quite low given that the AMC cost to borrow is over 1,000% at year zero. You have $15,000 worth of shares. You have $45,000 worth of shares as a result of your lending earnings after one year. Now, assuming you reinvest those earnings and lend out all the shares for another year at the same 200% cost to borrow fee at the end of year two, there is $135,000 that accumulates over time until, for example, the 11th year, when a user who began with $15,000 worth of shares would have over $2.6 billion. Now, assuming a 1,000% cost to borrow fee, which is more comparable to today's borrowing charge, a user with $15,000 worth of shares would have $3.2 trillion worth of shares by the end of year 8, assuming a 1,000% cost to borrow fee. Many of us may not be able to wait 11 or 8 years for the crush to occur. As previously stated, however, there are far more than $15,000 worth of shares being lent out. Looking at Vanguard and BlackRock together, Vanguard has $221 million worth of shares, and BlackRock has $90 million worth of shares together. Consistently, $300 million worth of shares are being lent out. $300 million worth of shares lent out at a cost of borrow fee of 1,000% for a single year equals $3.3 billion in interest. That's $3.3 billion in interest payments. These shorts are obligated to pay BlackRock and Vanguard, who will likely purchase additional AMC shares this year, adding to next year's borrowing fees. If 
from Vanguard was able to acquire $3.3 billion worth of AMC shares for next year, which were then lent out for another year. That's over $30 billion in interest alone for next year. In just one, two, or three years, these shorts will pay tens of billions, if not trillions, of dollars in borrowing costs alone. Remember that this is only for the legally disclosed shares held by BlackRock and Vanguard and does not include the fees for the hundreds of millions, if not billions of synthetic shares. Well, this is not me calculating borrowing fees on the additional 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 billion synthetic shares that exist. This is simply me calculating the borrowing fees on the shares currently held by BlackRock and Vanguard. And speaking of additional costs for these shorts, let's examine this tweet by Boss Blunts. He tweeted that shorts of AMC and Ape must also pay for the Delaware Chancery Court-approved share settlement. He'd stated that this was why they fought to prevent the reverse split conversion settlement and the issuance of shares. Now from the ACC's memo, they've updated a new deliverable for anyone holding AMC options. Therefore, the new deliverable for a single AMC options contract consists of 100 pre-split AMC and attainment class shares. On top of that, there's also 13 pre-split shares for the settlement as well. And finally, the real kicker for the shorts is the cash. In lieu of approximately 0.3333 fractional AMC shares post-split. So what does this mean and what exactly is Boss Blunts trying to get at? So basically what that means is that with the AMC conversion, reverse split and settlement, if you're currently holding an odd number of AMC and Ape shares, BACA, a number not divisible by 10, then any amounts left over from the amounts divisible by 10 will be paid cash in Liu. Basically, if you hold 13 shares pre-split post-split, you'll have one share of AMC and also three and a bit shares paid to you in cash. I think the way we can tell when we are really winning and when we are really, really close is where more hedge funds end up suspending withdrawals and even end up requesting secret bailouts. And when that happens, it won't be long until we start seeing headlines like this from the future. This user has posted this news article from Ape Street Journal on Friday, August 25th. A few days, if not a week or two in the future saying that. Stock hits the moon. I personally am very excited to see real news articles like this in the future for individual apes selling shares at $69,420 per share. If you haven't already, I'd really advise giving this article a read because the last sentence really tickled me. It said when asked for a comment on how billions of fake shares were allowed to exist, the SEC said to us, the DEC, who said to us, Fai and Ra, who said to ask the SEC, we know all of these institutions and all of these government entities completely try and avoid taking any kind of responsibility whatsoever. But taking responsibility won't matter when the mother of all short squeezes ends up happening. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers!